All right, guys, wanted to start off another video on some things. Uh, just looking through Final Cut Express, I know that uh, I talked before about wrapping up my conversation. Um, I, however, I've gotten a lot of posts from people saying, hey, keep posting your you know, side-by-side -side comparisons of Final Cut versus um, Premiere Pro. So let me start off again like I do all of these videos. I am using Final Cut Express, not Final Cut Pro. And let me make sure that it's fair and balanced here, right up front. There are things in Final Cut Pro uh, Studio that you can do that you cannot do in Final Cut Express. But I believe the things that I am demonstrating, both Final Cut Express and Final Cut Pro um, are able to do. So it's a fair comparison. I'm not letting Premiere Pro do some advantage that Final Cut Express doesn't have, but Final Cut Pro does. I'm not trying to shortchange it. I'm trying to be very honest and upfront. What I am doing is explaining what I like about Final Cut and what I like about Premiere Pro and how they kind of stack up to each other on things that I've seen. I am not a Final Cut professional and I'm also not an Adobe Premiere professional. I prefer personally Adobe Premiere because I'm more used to the interface. Um, Final Cut is a great program. I'm not going to debate that Final Cut is a very, very good program. Um, a large part of the, uh, uh, not the movie people, the, you know, like the movie editors and such, they use more avid type, uh, the avid editing tools, but folks in broadcast, a lot of those folks use Final Cut Express, or, or sorry about that, Final Cut Pro and uh, the studio version that has all the different uh, tools to edit sound, uh, animation, etc. Final Cut's a great program. Not gonna ignore, not gonna deny that. I only have Final Cut Express, so I can only compare Premiere Pro to Final Cut Express. But as I said, I'm only comparing the features in Premiere Pro to Final Cut that I believe Final Cut Pro and Final Cut Express both have. So it's not an unfair comparison, I don't think. Okay. And always, there may be other ways to do this in Final Cut that I am not aware of. And if there is, I welcome your feedback into telling me how you can do these things because it makes me just more knowledgeable with Final Cut. Like I say, I like Final Cut. It's a great little program. And I got it up and running right here. This is what you're seeing right now. It's Final Cut. Now, I wanted to edit some Flash video. And I realized that Adobe owns the Flash video, so their integration is probably going to be very tight when it comes to flash integration. But I was hoping that pre, uh, Final Cut would be able to import the flash files. So if I come up here into my project area, hit Command I, it brings an import in. Let's go to my desktop where I saved a flash file. See up here, there's a video.flv file, which is a flash file, and it, it's de-highlighted. It doesn't let me choose it. Uh, which is a bummer. I thought Final Cut would allow me to do that. In Premiere Pro, of course, we all know that the answer is going to be yes. It absolutely imports it just fine. As you can see here, I click the import button and it imports it, drag it right to the timeline and start playing it. So that's one thing that I thought was kind of a bummer, but I'm not going to hold that against Final Cut at all because Adobe owns Flash. Their stuff's going to be better integrated with Flash probably than anybody else's products out there. So, and that's not to say that the other products couldn't get a Flash integration or don't have it. It's just Adobe's products are probably going to be more tightly integrated with Flash. Okay, one of the things I love about Final Cut Express is the ability to use live type. And I had somebody ask me, uh, can you import live type? Uh, documents directly into Final Cut? Well, the answer to that is absolutely you can. Right here, this Adobe Lower Third IPR, this is directly from LiveType. I saved it and it just saved the .IPR file, which then immediately integrates right into Final Cut. So with Premiere Pro, not so much though. The uh, IPR does not uh, and import there so that's kind of a bummer so you know like I say same thing holds true it's live type is going to be more geared towards Final Cut so it's going to be tightly integrated with it so there you go 
And in a previous video, I talked about the ability to be able to drag clips to the far right and insert or, or overwrite, replace, fill to fill, superimpose. That is really cool. That little, uh, that little drag and drop, the squares like that, very, very cool. Over in Premiere Pro, if I wanted to do something similar, let's say, for instance, I throw this backpacking footage in here and I want to drag it over, it doesn't have that feature. But what it does have is, is if you double click here, you can certainly use these tools here to do the same thing. However, it's easier to do in Final Cut, in my opinion, by dragging and dropping over here if you want to do it that way. Very easy tool to use. And Final Cut over here offers those same type of tools that you get in Premiere Pro as well over here. So you can do it the, the replace and, and overlay and things of that nature right here in Premiere Pro. But in Final Cut, they offer it by dragging and dropping in a nice, nice interface that's easy to read, easy to understand. It's color coded basically so you see what's what. So it makes it very easy. Um, some of the other things that I don't like about Final Cut is their tabs up here. They separate filters and motion here and here. And in Premiere Pro, they have just one section. So when I double click on a, on a clip and you click on this tab, they're, they're all together in one tab. So if I'm adding any kind of uh, video effects to this movie, you can see that they get added right under the video effects here and under here are the motion, opacity, time remapping, channel blur I just added. In Final Cut, you'll notice that they have separate tabs for those. Now, this is personal taste and personal taste alone. These are both here, easy to use. Um, there's not much difference when it comes to how they're presented in each program except that Final Cut uses tabs up top and separates the motion from the filters. Some people may enjoy that and think that, hey, it's better organized for me to do it this way. That's great, use it that way. For me, I like it all under one thing, so I have it all right in front of me. I don't have to go back and forth. That's personal preference alone. I'm not going to say that Final Cut's wrong or right on that. I just prefer it this way in Adobe. Uh, I think that's it for now. I'm going to be, like I say, digging through each program to try to kind of come up come up with fair comparisons between each. And like I said before, I'm not going to compare anything from Premiere Pro that Final Cut Express can't do, but Final Cut Pro would, because that's just not fair. I want to be fair about this, and I think that the things that I've compared so far are fair, and so we'll leave it at that for now. Please, oh please, give me some comments, feedback. Um, let's be civil in our debates here. And if you have some video feedback, throw it at me. If there's something that I've said about Final Cut or Premiere Pro that's not right, let me know what that is. Send me an email via YouTube and let's chat and talk about this. Um, I'm always eager to learn more about this stuff. So if you've got some information that I've said wrong or just completely skipped over, let me know and I'll make sure I include it in the next video that I do as a correction and we'll go from there. Thanks, guys. Take care.